Hi, this is Tony Mike Grevin coming to you from the beautiful OC. I've got a fun one today with Judge Simpson. I intended to put this on my live stream earlier, but I messed it up and used the wrong clip. So here we go. Let's do it. All right, court does call the case of the people versus Isaiah Williams. Yes, sir. Good morning, Your Honor. Danielle Russo Bennett, Department of Attorney General, on behalf of the people. Good Judge Torsho Feaster, Assistant Public Defender, on behalf of Mr. Isaiah Williams. Mr. Williams, please state your name for the record. Um, Isaiah Williams, Pro Purposonic. I've explained to the court, uh, Your Honor, that I uh, told Mr. Brown. Well, there, there you have it already. He, he says Isaiah Wellings pro per persona. It has, it has some echo. That's not me. That's just, that's just from the clip, and you, and you know, you know, you're in for a good time already. And as Mr. I Mr. Mr. To, Williams, um, I'll tell, uh, Mr. Williams, him. I'll tell Judge what's going on. Just give me one second, okay? Well, I'm trying to explain it because you haven't been able to do so, Your Honor. That's why I'm saying it because this officer. This attorney here before you, something is wrong here because we have a lack of communication. I keep taking writing to their people and writing and telling them, you understand? And I read it. I'm going to tell the judge that you want to go. Simpson, who is the chief public defender's office in Washington County on. Okay, so here, here we go. He's he's going to dump on his attorney, the public defender, Torsio Feaster. Uh, it's not going to fly. Uh, uh, Judge Simpson is quite familiar with Torsio Feaster and likes him and, and has respect for his ability to practice law. So th this is all falling on deaf ears, but, you know, Mr. Williams is going to try it. April the 22nd, then I've written her again, you understand, another copy just last week. And I took it straight to him on the phone, Your Honor. And every time I talk to these people, they do not get to comprehend that I no longer wish they help at all. They are incompetent. They are not finding me with what I need. I need someone who can represent me that's going to take and let me know what they're doing in my best interest. These people are not working in my best interest. They do not want me to take and get a copy of a true motion for discovery. They do not you know, want to get me in the courtroom where I can take and bring the deal that I want this illegal device taken off my person that I can be able to sit in the courtroom and be free of the privacy of my mind. I mean, I have an advice on me, Your Honor. And it invades my privacy of mind, the United States Supreme Court. He's got an interesting pattern. He he, uh, whatever whatever he does, he just hammers the the last word, and and it's it's like, it's not bad as a, as a speaking technique. I'm sure it's unconscious. But uh, it's the substance is lacking. <laughs> but just a second said, they would not allow such an atrocity on the United States citizen to walk around with an invasion of privacy of mind. But yet, these people here who want to represent me go tell me today, we can't even get your property. I've already, you understand, been illegally kidnapped on October the 12th in Chicago off a CTA bus, you honor, and was kidnapped and robbed. No, you were not kidnapped. You were arrested. <laughs> I love it. You know, they, they do this all the time where they mischaracterize the situation. You know, I was kidnapped and placed in a dungeon. No, you were arrested and put in jail because you, you had charges or warrants or something like that. The, the judge doesn't let him get away with it. He tells him straight to his face. We've already been through that before. I was not arrested, Your Honor. I was kidnapped oh, and robbed oh, for $12,000. Yeah, you, you were arrested. My property. Oh, now yeah. the property okay. doesn't come up. Kidnapped, and arrested, $12, took it out of my All right. You don't want to hear it. I know it. No, I'm listening to everything you're saying. At least that those parts that make sense. Mr. Feaster, you were saying. Thank you, Judge. I've spoken to the Attorney General's office and to Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams did in indicate to me that he wanted the letters that he sent to our office returned to him so that he could file a motion on his own behalf. Uh, for our part, Your Honor, our office has hired an independent investigator to look into this matter. I am waiting for a report from that investigator. If we could have about four weeks, Judge, to get that report, then I'll make sure in the meanwhile I return to Mr. Williams all of the communications 
he's sent to our office. So he has everything that he needs, and he already has his discovery, Your Honor, just for the record. Before I hear from the Attorney General, just you, so wait, Your Honor, I do not want to take a hand. Mr. Williams, Mr. Williams, Mr. Williams, Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams. I'd appreciate it, Your Honor. Just I have stop. almost five to Just five. stop. Mr. Williams, yes, stop. Your Honor. I've listened to you. Now you're going to listen to me. I will. So that council's aware, Mr. Williams did file some documents. Some of them I don't entirely understand. I have reviewed them. One of them is a form motion for discovery. I don't know that what he has put in there is applicable to this case. However, Upon receiving that, what I did is I sent copies of that to the Attorney General's office or had my had the clerk send it to the Attorney General as well as to the Public Defender's Office because it appeared to me that counsel may not have been aware that this had come in. All right. Madam Attorney General, is there anything you'd like to do? There is a couple of points. Thank you, Judge. And I do appreciate the court sending that to me. Um, and I think that we're going to have to make a record on this, whether or not Mr. Williams is, is really competent, in fact, to um, represent himself. You did make it clear to him at the last hearing that if he does choose to go forward on his own behalf, he has to serve the people. He did not serve us with any of those motions. So I do appreciate the court sending that to us. Um, I think the, the court statute and the case law is very clear that he has a right to. However, it must be knowingly and intelli intelligently done and that the court is going to have to uh, make him aware of the pitfalls, the dangers, yes. um, the disadvantages of what that really entails. Um, he does not have an absolute. Okay, so it looks like they're going to do a Friday inquiry and and see if he can represent himself. It, it, I, I don't like his odds. <laughs> and, of course, he trips over the first thing that most pro se's trip over, which is uh, if you're going to file something, you need to provide it to all the attorneys of record in the case. And uh, that that's... It, that's just a, a usual starting point because they usually want to get something in front of the judge. They send it to the judge directly. It's not how it works. And and that that's just very often the first stumbling block. There are many others, but that's just the first thing where, where you can see the person has no clue. Right as well to question the victims in this, this case. And so I think that's the Daniels case. I bring that up for a very specific reason, and maybe Mr. Williams needs to hear this as well. Mr. Feaster is aware um, that I did file a very substantial, extensive other acts notice with the court way back in January and uh, served it upon Mr. Feaster. It is extensive in that uh, the people have put the parties on notice that I intend to produce an extensive amount of domestic violence and sexual assault evidence at the exam if Mr. Williams intends to, in fact, hold his uh, exam. So he needs to be boy. aware of that and be prepared to knowingly be able to address that at the exam. Um, and so that is one of the issues that I wanted to address as well. Um, one of the other things that I wanted to ask, I know Mr. Feaster said that Mr. Williams is going to want some additional time to perhaps go to the law library, do some research, and file some additional motions. Um, before deciding whether to set an exam. I have absolutely no uh, objection to that. Uh, yeah, the law library, he, we're, we're nowhere near being prepared to go to the law library and figure anything out, and everybody knows it, but but we're going through the motions. Because if this does go to exam, I expect it will be lengthy, uh, 10 witnesses or so, um, and uh, we have some out-of-state witnesses, so I have no objection to that. One thing I am going to ask of the court to consider, um, and obviously the court doesn't have to consider that today, if this does go to exam, I would ask you, Judge Simpson, to consider retaining this case for exam. I know that you're very busy um, and the docket is very busy, but because you are aware and you've had this case since January, you are aware of the unique challenges and issues in this case, you are ultimately probably going to have to that makes a lot of sense. She's just requesting that the, that the judge keep it because he's familiar with it. And I I can relate to this because if, if this gets sent over to another judge, you're starting at square one with all this. Uh, you, you know, he, he's familiar with the fact, both the facts and the behave, the prior behavior of the defendant in this case, which will save a lot of time. You make a ruling on whether or not Mr. Williams is going to, in fact, be able to represent himself going forward, at least at this stage. 
um, and because of the length of the exam, I'm going to ask that, that you at least consider um, retaining this case for purposes of preliminary exam. Um, I, since you brought that up, I, I will just, oh, it's a very quick answer to that. I realize based upon what had previously been filed, where this case started, that it was probably going to be in the best interest of judicial economy and otherwise that I do retain the case. And so that is my intention. Thank you, Judge. For your honor, if I may address to the court, you please. For your yeah. honor, yeah. first I'd like to take a state to the court that I have went through and looked at some constitutional statutes here. I said on October 12th, I constituted as a kidnap. You said it was an arrest. I was not given no amendment ran or right. I was taken off the bus. My property was taken, and I was informed by Mr. by Mr. Pritchard that they were telling me they can't find my property. So evidently, I constituted as a robbery. Over thirty thousand dollars have been taken from me. I have three children, are minors, and they have been taken away from me after their mother has deceased on July the twenty first of last year. That's how I got this money. This and him money. But the twenty thousand dollars came from the insurance policy, and the twenty and the twelve thousand came from Mediana grocery store, for where I was injured, where I was jumped on. This is how okay. we found out. Okay. Okay. May I address two points, John? I know you're very busy, Mr. Williams. Mr. Mr. Williams, thank you. I appreciate it. You said this is my hearing. I'd like to take a speech. No, no, Mr. Mr. Are you on? Williams, Mr. Williams, no. Yes, this is my, Mr. Williams, this is my hearing. The Seventh Amendment yours. right, and the Sixth Amendment right, the Eighth Amendment right, the Ninth Amendment right, and the Fourteenth Amendment right. One more word and you're muted. I'm denied all the rights. Madam Attorney General. Uh, Thank you, Your Honor. I did not get a chance to address the discovery just because it's an official, it's, I don't know if it's official, Your Honor, but it's a filed motion for Mr. Williams. Um, Mr. Feaster had um, was delivered a voluminous amount of discovery in January, and obviously he is the one who has the right under the court statute to the discovery and to share it with his client if he chooses. He said he's done so. Um, and just with Mr. Williams, he, this is the second time he's brought up his minor children and getting out for his children. I just want the court to be put on notice. Mr. Williams was residing and by his own statements to turn or to law enforcement for 20 years in Chicago, Illinois, and he was not the, the children that he is speaking of were not in his care and custody. They are here in the state of Michigan. He was not taking care of any of those children. So I just want the court to be aware of that. All right, very good. Uh, Mr. Feaster, um, Go, go ahead. Yeah. What were you going to say? I, I don't know if another competency referral may be appropriate uh, in this case, Your Honor. Uh, I'm having difficulty communicating with Mr. Williams. Yeah, we see My that. thought is that I can have our social worker at our office uh, go and meet with him and speak to him, and she can maybe give me some guidance and advice on next best steps for dealing with Mr. Williams and trying to move this case forward, Judge. And, and Your Honor, he absolutely has a right to an independent, and I obviously would not be able to voice any objection to that. And I think that my only, I don't even have a concern with that um, at this point. I think the report was short. The last report we had was kind of basic. It was kind of short, didn't have a lot to it. I would agree on that point. But he, Mr. Williams has brought up two points that I know we can't ignore over the last two hearings. And I know Mr. Brown was present at the last hearing. He keeps referring to a chip that is inside of him. Um, Mr. Feaster and I are in uh, receipt of many, many medical records for Mr. Williams that do not cite to anything that he is talking about. So that is concerning to the people that he keeps very zealously referring to this chip that is inside of him. He's asked you twice to court order it be removed. I don't know what he's referring to. That's concerning to the people. Um, yes, there's a number of, quite frankly, what's being said by the defendant that is concerning to the court in particular yeah yeah the, uh, chip is just another brick in the wall here uh <laughs> his, his uh, legal analysis is is just as bad particularly the relief that he's requesting of the court mr feaster in, in terms of an independent are you going to be making that request or so yes your honor so my 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 initial thought was to have our social worker uh, speak to him since she has more uh, more versed with mental health than I am 
and to get her take on that, Your Honor. But I do think an independent is going to be uh, necessary given the statements that Mr. Williams is making uh, and his request to represent himself. And I just want to make perfectly sure that he is competent to move forward uh, before we put him in a position to uh, put himself uh, in line for a potentially very long uh, prison term, Your Honor. So I would like to make sure he is uh, able to proceed and aid in his own defense, Your Honor. So I would like to move in that direction, Judge. Yes. All right. He, Well, let's do it this way. I'm not going to even, and, and I realize what people have brought this up, I'm not going to even address any medical issues, whether it be a chip or anything else, until such time as, um, until such time as this, this defendant, um, we get through the issue regarding competency. Um, it becomes difficult, I think, also given the, what the defendant has said for the court to even properly address the defendant's desire to represent himself because I'm not clear that without additional uh, information, the court's not clear that that decision on his part is even voluntary. Um, I, I couldn't in good faith say that, given what he's saying um, to the court and what he's expressing to the court. So, I guess, Mr. Feaster, how long would it take you for your social worker to make the attempt and maybe be successful in speaking with Mr. Williams? How long will that I, I can put in an, an emergent, emergent request, and I think she could go see him within a week, Judge, and, and evaluate him. And then if she determines an independent uh, is appropriate, I can seek approval from our management to get that started, Judge. All right. And I don't know how long that process would take. So I, I am inclined to just adjourn the probable cause conference with that. The There is also... And at this point, you are counsel record. There are also these motions that, you know, this motion that has been filed. Um, and and I, here's how I'm going to lead the motions at this point. If, as counsel of record, you deem it appropriate that they be filed, they'll then, or be heard, then somehow or another, either that you'll sign on to these or place these in some form that the court can understand them and that the prosecution would be able to answer if necessary yes, to the extent they need to be. Yes. Translation, uh, go, go ahead and, uh, and make these uh, make sense. If to the extent that, it, that there's a kernel of an actual argument that, that should be made, could you please uh, redraft them in a proper way so that we can, we can address them. So, you had originally requested a month adjournment. Are you still requesting that time period, or did you need? Did you were looking at something else? I would still request at least a month, Judge, because I think we have a lot we have to tackle here in this matter, and so I request at least a month, please. Mr. Feaster, the master of understatement. <laughs> um. All right. <laughs> Without objection, I will adjourn this as the probable cause conference. I'll adjourn this out. To July 21st, 2022, 9 a.m. Thank you so much, Judge. Thank you, Judge. The bond will continue as denied. Mr. Williams, I'm going to give you one admonishment. When you come back on the 21st, you, if you're going to represent yourself at some point, regardless of what it is, you will conduct yourself properly before this court. You will not try to overtalk me because that will not happen. All right. Am I understood? You can nod if you understand me because I'm not unmuting you. Okay. There is no nod. I've said what I've said. I will expect your behavior, that your behavior and that you will govern yourself accordingly. Thank you, folks. Thank you, Judge. Thank Thanks, you, Judge. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Feaster. Judge, my good friend Yasmin Tucker wishes me to convey she says hello to you. Tell her hello and let her know that we've forgotten her name. 
Don't even know. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you, Judge. Well, there you have it. Uh, th- th- that guy's just out there. You know, he's trying to represent himself. He's got a, a very good attorney in Toshio Feaster, but of course, he won't listen to him. I. This is always the difficult situation. You see a lot of this. I don't think the guy's crazy. I think he knows he's going away for a long time. I think he realizes he's got problems, and even with good representation, he's probably going to be convicted. So I think this is more desperation than crazy. But I could be wrong. I mean, that, that's an evaluation for for uh, the appropriate people to do. And it looks like that's what's in place here. It lo- looks like that's where we're headed. So I, I agree with, the, with what's going on. Uh, in terms of the, the court procedure, and, and I think both his attorney and the judge and the attorney general are are all on board, that all makes a lot of sense. But ultimately, my guess is that this guy passes the competency hearing, flunks the Fred inquiry, and they, they force him uh, to have an attorney against his will. That... I don't know. That's just that's just my gut reaction to it. But I thought it, I thought it was a pretty interesting one. Um, the, the the chip thing too, for instance. Like I, I think he just threw that in there. He might even he might even be trying to to set up um, an insanity defense. Who knows? Who knows? But he needs to be evaluated, and that's what's occurring. Here at Law Talk, we like to have fun with uh, silly stuff that happens in court, and every once in a while, and completely by accident, I assure you. You might learn something. Thanks for watching.